Check this out. I have a great guest here today, um, a good friend of mine. Um, his name is Whit Kinzer, and he is with a company called SEO Cherry. And so this episode is all about SEO, paid Google ads, everything marketing digitally we're going to try to dive into, um, and then just give you some education through it and maybe some entertainment. I like to call that edumatainment. All right. Uh, so I may have to pull out a couple of jokes or something. All right. All right. They may be cheesy, but it's okay. I own a charcuterie business. so And you will make their day cheddar. And I will make their day cheddar. Yes. All right. It doesn't get gooder than that. So, <laughs> hey, uh, so welcome. Thank Glad you you're very here. much for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, man, thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and uh, be a part of this. You know, the, the idea of the podcast was really to help the small business owner, right? right? Um, there's many times in my life that I've had to ask questions and I've had mentors that have really shaped who I am and, and what I've become. Um, so, you know, we just want to have something that we can give back to the small business owner and uh, yeah, just help them out. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, being a small business owner myself, I certainly <laughs> champion the small business owner and the more that we can give back to each other and help each other grow. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we get started, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, family, kids, where, sure. you know, your history, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm married. My wife's name okay. is Annie. We have a daughter that is seven. Her name is Tatum. And we have a son arriving, supposed to be on the 25th. All right. Though my wife thinks it's going to come early. March 25th. Yeah. Man. And I also have a daughter that's 26. Okay. So 26 is zero um, on that scale. <laughs> that's right? a big scale. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, on a personal level, I mean, I'm huge into golf. Um, okay. I'm a singer songwriter, or I guess formerly. Okay. Um, still do that. I'm, you know, into sports and working out and those things. But at a personal level, it's pretty much I'm either working, golfing, or with my family. Okay. Um, that's pretty yeah. much my personal life. Yeah. I try to get into golf i did golfing with my father-in-law for a while okay and uh then once i get into martial arts golf just didn't have enough contact sport for me okay and uh yeah but well, and, I, I, and i suck at it to be honest with you well most people do yeah um you know i mean it it's one of the hardest sports i would believe and i think if yeah. i was trying to take it up again today i don't know that i would yeah how long have you been playing since i was probably 13 or 14 oh okay you know it was kind of just something that i picked up how old like, are you now 46 okay yeah, yeah. Okay. i've been doing it a age? while yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you do it like through high school or anything? Or is it just all hobby? I did. I played okay. like on the high school golf team. Yeah. Uh, but it was something I think that my dad didn't golf, but it was something that they did tell me this would probably be the one sport that would help you with business when you're older. Hmm. Um, and if you think about it, it's, you know, you can play an adult basketball league or right. rec league for softball. But I mean, at the end of the day, golf is kind of something that you can do without a back problem, you know, till, yeah. you're, till you're old, you know, very old. Right, right, right. Um, you know. So a side hobby that I like as well is billiards. I play okay. Pool. And right. that's another aspect of it, right? You could play pool for, for a long time, right? Right. And uh, so, yeah, I really enjoy that too. So awesome. So, let me ask you this. Has sure. golf helped you with your business? Sure. Uh, I mean, okay. I actually golf with a client last week or before they were a client and yeah. now they are becoming a client. There you go. Um, so in some level, yeah. you know, it helps, but most importantly, I mean, I think that if you were to golf in a client setting, you really get a chance to know each other True. on a golf course. You find out how quick someone gets frustrated. You find <laughs> out if they cheat or not. Right. Um, right. you know, you can kind of get an idea about somebody's mm. personality and, um, their mannerisms and so forth, and kind of get an idea if you think that's a person you would want to work with, okay. you know, with four hours on a golf course. I mean, that's a pretty long time. Yeah. You know, and the truth serum comes out at some point. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that's the truth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so I, I definitely would not have pictured you to be a golfer in high school, maybe football player or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah, I've grown. Um, as I got older, I stopped okay. running and just lifted weights, and so therefore you're just forced to put on weight. There you go. Yeah. I think. Well, I, I never picked up running. Well, I used to run in high school. I was really quick. Okay. And uh, so, uh, side note, real quick. So I was ninth grade baseball player, and uh, so we'd always have to run a couple miles before we'd practice. And uh, so I just found this one guy that seemed to be the fastest guy, and I just stayed right behind him. I had no idea that he had, like, the state record. He was a senior. State record, he ran um, a mile in four minutes and 40 seconds. And I came in 10 seconds after him one time. 
That's pretty impressive, right? Four minute and 50 second mile. And the, the coach was like, hey, I want you to be on the track team. I was like, I hate running. No way. <laughs> And then, so that's why I picked up martial arts. So that way, if I ever get chased, I'll just turn around. You don't have to run. Well, I will be the one running. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that would be the size deceiving. You mentioned I seem bigger, but at yeah. the end of the day, if the two of us ever had to tussle, I would, I would be flat on my back. Yeah. yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Well, let's get into it. So uh, today I want to talk about SEO, right? Sure. What is SEO, right? First, I guess we'll start there, right? For those okay. people that have no idea what this is about, um, SEO and tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. SEO is search engine optimization. Absolutely. Right. You're you're optimizing your website to be found better, quicker. Yeah. I don't know. How would you say that? Ready to boost your business's impact. Fully promoted Fort Worth is your one-stop destination for branding needs, specializing in branded apparel and promotional products. They help attract, retain, and engage customers. From custom uniforms to eye-catching items, fully promoted Fort Worth has you covered. Contact them today to unlock your brand's potential. 817-803-4404. Fully promoted. Your success, their passion. At the end of the day, you're optimizing your website to show up higher in Google search, right? And go. over the years, what's that? what that means has kind of changed. Yeah. Um, I think when it originally started, it was more about gaming the system. Okay. Um, now it's more about just giving Google what they want, mm. right? Um. You know, the good thing about search engine search engine optimization is, you know, it's organic traffic. It's coming naturally. Yeah. But uh, just to conclude on that, you know, SEO means different things to different people. And okay. when I say that, um, there's all sorts of different SEO companies um, from very small ones to very large ones. Um, if you're a business owner, you're listening to this, you've probably got an email from somebody offering you SEO services and telling you that your website's terrible. Right. Um, you'll get emails from people offering you SEO for $99 a month. You'll have people having way bigger. And by that, I mean... SEO can mean changing a title tag on a website. Mm. SEO could mean getting a link from another website, right? So okay. SEO has a lot of different um, components. Okay. Um, and so what actually makes it up is this whole service, right? Yeah. And as far as the business owner, right, what would you say as far as why, and we'll dive in a little bit more about SEO and maybe some ins and outs of it, but um, ultimately, end of the day, why is that important? What does it matter to be first on Google or first page? You know, what does that really matter as a business owner for me? Sure. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, now Google is where people go. Yeah. Um, you know, in the eighties, people went to a phone book right. and business owners paid the most money to be at the very top of that phone book and have the biggest ad. Mm. And nowadays Google is like a digital phone book, right? Yeah. And so instead of going to yellow pages and looking for a plumber, now you would just type in, for example, plumber in Fort Worth. Yeah, some of our audience probably has no idea what Yellow Pages never seen. They probably know what it's about, right? right? But to actually have Yellow Pages show up on your front doorstep, right, just once a quarter or once a year or whatever. Sure. I remember that. Right? Big old thick yellow book. I remember my dad putting a few of them in the seat so I could drive. Yeah, so for you that are listening, these things were very thick there books, you, you know, with yeah. all these phone numbers and businesses yeah. in it, right? Hey, if, uh, if you had that experience with a phone book, uh, sitting in a seat while driving, comment below <laughs> and uh, let us know how many phone books were you, right? Yes, right. Yeah, yeah that's so funny. Um, but yeah, you know, definitely uh, it, it has changed, right? And so, you know, you talked about Google a lot um, and and. What what percentage do you think of the business is through Google? Uh, what's crazy is like, you know, Xerox, right? Back in the day, you know, you would make a copy of something. Obviously, we would all say, yeah, I'm going to Xerox it, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's the same thing. When someone, no one ever says, hey, I'm going to go to my search engine and, right. and, and check my search engine, right? right? They say, I'm going to Google it. Sure. Yeah. And so how, 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 what percentage do you think goes through Google versus, well, I don't even know what other ones are there. I guess Bing, yeah. right? Bing, Yahoo may have one or something yes, like that. I mean, but really, I mean, so insignificant. Yeah, I can't, ones, right? I can't think of the one that, the, uh, like, you know, Joe Rogan has talked about. That. I cannot remember the name, but there's another one out there that's kind of less. Like um, a duck, ad, that go? Yeah, yeah, something like that duck, that's ad-driven, yeah. right? But for yeah. the most part, I think the only reason people use Bing is because sometimes they buy a computer and it's that's what's installed on there. Right. Uh, my wife, for yeah. example, too. Um, okay. You know, her Bing was in, in, uh, installed on there, and that's a search engine that she used. Yeah. Um, there is an actual stat out there, but yeah. my guess off the top of my head is probably eighty to eighty five percent of the right. traffic is Google. Yeah, yeah it has to be right. right. Um, and and because it's it's there, it it'd be very difficult to have any kind of substantial gains trying to go against the grain. 
right? For sure, if, on the SEO side. Right, right. right. So, so that's what it's really all about, is getting that first page on Google. For sure. I mean, yeah. I, I think in not just being on the first page, the closer to the top, the mm-hmm. better off you're going to be. Yeah. Um, the statistics change all the time, but the difference in like, say, being number one in Google, which would get over 60% of the click share. I was going to ask you yeah. what that... Per- yeah, yeah, I, I was, believe last time I checked, it was somewhere around 60%. Yeah. You go down to say number three, mm. that number goes down to say 30%, right? So wow. the person that's number one versus three could get double the traffic. Yeah. Now you keep moving down that page, it gets significantly lower. Yeah. So not just being on the first page, being at the top of the page is uber important. Okay. Um, but just being on the page is a great start because sure. people search differently. Some people yep. will go down the page, some people won't. Right. Um, but I like to... Um, you know, really put that out to people that it's not just first page and so many SEO companies make this pitch about be on the first page of Google. Right. Um, but it matters what keyword you're on the, on the, Mm. um, on the first page for, yeah, um, for sure. So it's not just about being on the first page. Yeah, no, I like how you said that too, about the keywords and things like that. We may dive into that too. So, all right. So whenever I'm, Again, I, I don't know everything at all. That's why I have you on this, right? Because <laughs> you, you do this for a living, right? right. You have your own business. Uh, name of the business is SEO Cherry. Right. Right. And I like how you say, be the cherry on top. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, whenever I look at it, you know, okay, you got SEO to me is a little bit more of a long game. Yes, absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and if I misspeak, please uh, let me know. But so, SEO would be more of like investment long game and like paid ads would be, Hey, I need to convert now. Right. And and so, so why would a new company um, go to paid ads versus just diving in head deep for SEO and waiting the long game? Well, I think the like to your point, right? If I'm a company, I, I guess to start with this, right? I'd, I'd really have to understand what the company is, what their goals are, what kind of budget they're working with, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, you would do them both in synergy, and that's where you're going to get mm. your best results, right? But okay. if I'm a new business and SEO is going to take six to twelve months, let's just say before I get an ROI on that, okay? You know, for those six months, that's a long time to make an investment without a payback, right? Sure. So I like to look at the AdWords as a way to get in there right away in the first 24 to 48 hours and start yeah. generating leads and acquiring clients. And if done correctly, you know, you can just reinvest the profits from your AdWords campaign or paid search mm. and then let that, you know, be the investment for your SEO. Yeah. Um, yeah, very good. Um, so do you think there's a, okay, so whenever you're looking at, and I guess, you know, we're really just talking about Google, right? Right. Uh, whenever you're looking at Google, you have m- different sections, right? Mm-hmm. And if I, I don't have it, uh, Google pulled up or anything, but if I remember right, a lot of your top stuff is your ads, yes. right? Yes. Um, those are your paid ads that you, you know, pay Google for your ad words, I right. guess you say. And then, then I think what Google does next is what they call, I think the top three, like on a map. Mm-hmm. What do they do? They call that like the uh, three pack, it, map pack, map yeah, pack, it changes, three yeah. pack, something like that, right? Where you have like the top three. Um, what's interesting to me is I heard, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that uh, what shows up there depends on many different things. It's almost like they have an algorithm, For sure. right? They'll take you know your reviews, your time of day, your opening, how far away that person is from the store. For sure, right? Yeah. Your geo tracking. Or- Location, the proximity, or, yeah, right. stuff like that. So I said, I, I know just enough to get me in trouble. Sure, sure. All right. So, and then after that is the organic, right? Which is just stuff that just happens uh, because of information. More like that's where your SEO is going to lift you up on that organic side, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let me expound it just a little bit, please, right? Yeah, so please. when you look at the ads, there's actually two components of the ads, right? Okay. For certain local businesses, what pops up is a Google guarantee or local service ad. Mm. You'll probably notice if you look for a roofer, a plumber, service like that, you'll have ads that actually show up before the AdWords okay. um, that say Google guarantee with stars on them. Okay. Those could actually show up before the actual search ads, right? Mm. So you may have a local service ad, which is a Google product, followed by the Google search ads, okay. and then followed by a possible ad on the map pack you were talking about, Okay. right? Um, then your map pack listing. Wow. Um, and then your organic listing, right? So yeah. both the map listing and the organic listings are actually both organic. Okay. Neither of them are paid yeah. and they are basically rewarded to the sites that have 
um, exhibited the most expertise, authority, and trust with Google. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that get placed up there. And it's, like I said, on the map and on the organic listings, which a lot of people aren't aware of. Mm. No, I wasn't aware of that either. Yeah. So yeah, good. See, I get to learn something right. too, right? Right, right. How awesome. Um, so it, do you think there's um, trust factors when it comes to ads above the map, maps, and then the organic? Do you think there's there has to be some kind of like level of trust that they have sure. that... Uh, I was just curious on that, if people trust ads more or if they trust the organic more. For sure. I think all the statistics and research has proven that organic traffic yeah. converts better. Yeah. Now, that being said, here would be my, my caveat on that is if I'm locked out of my car mm -hmm. and I'm looking for a locksmith, yeah. I'm probably going to call the first person I see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of like going back into why both are important. I think it all uh, depends on you your go. niche, your industry, how people search for you, what times of day they're searching. I think there's a lot uh, of variables on whether it makes sense or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, how would a business owner, do you think, you know, we talked about doing, um, talked a little bit about SEO and paid ads. How do you, how would I determine on uh, whether CEO, SEO or paid ads is best for my strategy um, goals and budgets. What, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you kind of hit on it before. If okay. you're looking for a short term strategy, yeah. you need to get leads in the next couple months and that's mm -hmm. what you need to grow your business. Then AdWords yeah. is really your only choice. Yeah. Now that being said, if you were a website or a company where your website was say maybe at the bottom of the first page or Google or top of second page, mm -hmm. you know, you're in striking distance and we could make that happen a little bit faster. Yeah. But like you said, SEO is a long term strategy. Yeah. If you were looking to give your business to your kids or you're looking to have your business for the next five to 10 years, mm. organic traffic's ultimately going to build your brand. Yeah. It's going to provide free traffic besides what you're paying an SEO company. Right, right. Your conversions will be higher. Yeah. But in the meantime, um, as we just mentioned, the landscape of that Google listing, mm -hmm. I mean, there was two different ad slots out of four, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so I think they both, you know, have their utility. Yeah. Um, and then that kind of goes to the budget question. You I know, gotcha. yeah. do you have the budget to do both? Right. You know, well, it almost like you, 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 you have to do it though, right? At a certain point, you're like, you know what? If you're going to be in business today, right? Unless it's just like, a, I mean, I guess you could build it to be a completely word of mouth business. Sure. And that would be the ultimate goal, right? That right. I don't have to do anything. Right. Which I guess is the organic side of Google, right? right? And that's sort of like a word of mouth because it's organic. And that would be, I guess, the ultimate goal. But, you know, obviously any new business uh, is, is very difficult to lean on that only for sure so you almost have to right and um i guess there'd be a matrix on saying hey this is how much i'm going to spend this is my return on investment and then if it's dialed in then it to me it's almost like an atm machine it's like hey how much can i push towards this right, right? for sure because it yeah go ahead no i would say on both sides i mean yeah. especially with the ads because yeah. i mean it's pretty simple to understand when you look at an account you know, how how much traffic is left you know you'll get a mm -hmm. message in there that says limited by budget we can mm -hmm. get you this much more traffic. So uh, if you know what your conversion rates are, know what your profitability is, and yeah. all you have to do is feed a little bit more money in the sh machine to get more conversions, right. then like you said, it, it when done correctly, you yeah. know, it can work as somewhat of an ATM. Yeah. Although getting to that point, it's not as simple as flipping a switch. Right. I, I just don't want to lead people to believe no, that no, no, I you get set it. up a Google ad and next thing you know, you're yeah. um you can retire. Well, and we'll yeah, we're gonna get into that. Um <laughs> For sure. So, hey, listen, if you are uh, watching or listening here, um, what we're doing today is just talking about our SEO and our uh, AdWords and just all things digital marketing. Uh, so if you know a business owner or someone that may be interested in this, growing their business, then have them join the conversation and listen in. Um, so, yeah, let's get back to it. So um, did you go to college for this? I did not. Okay. It was something after college. So when I started doing this, it was probably roughly 20 years ago. Okay. Um, and at that time, they didn't offer search engine optimization. Digital marketing was not even a thing in college, right? Yeah. When, yeah. When did SEO really become, you know, bigger, right? As a business type of thing. Right. Well, I think it started back then. But I mean, as far as yeah. people, the education side is what you're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, I think yeah. now in college, you can take classes on digital marketing, search yeah. engine optimization to some level. I gotcha. But I don't really know, honestly, when yeah. they started offering an education because I got my education online, oh, okay. right? <laughs> Followed by working at agencies where it was essentially my advertising college. When you say online, like an online college type thing or? No, I mean, 
I'll just kind of fat give you my story real fast, yeah, yeah, right? Go the ahead. the yeah, only reason I'm even sitting in this chair talking about SEO is I was an entrepreneur who hired an SEO company. Okay. Um, I gave them, it's been a long time, but let's just yeah. say roughly $20,000 over six months to rank me in Google. And six months later, um, I had zero results. Oh my um, gosh. Not a trust fund baby. So I couldn't, yeah. you know, just ask for more money. Sure. And so I had no choice but to figure it out. Yeah. And so I literally spent almost a year of my life mm. combing through blogs, YouTube, forums. Cause at the time, I mean, SEO was not like something you could just go get information about. Right. Right. Um, That's what I was, yeah. it, it was a lot easier back then. You could use a lot of gray hat tools and so forth. But yeah. um, that's kind of how I got into that. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. And that was, uh, what, 15, probably fi yeah, 15, 15 years ago or so. Wow. And, and it just kind of worked where next thing, you know, yeah. companies were hiring me um, okay. to do that. Nice. Um, shortly after that, I kind of realized like, Hey, I really do need to get my education in this. Right. I, right. I think I know what I'm doing, but you know, yeah. a lot of it was self-taught. Yeah. And then I also started understanding too, that digital marketing is more than just SEO. Yeah, you know, there's sure. various components, right? Right. Um, so that kind of began my life in the agency world. And yeah. I actually started as pay-per-click pay management I'm okay. um, in the agency world. And then shortly after that, moved into the SEO side of things because that's where I wanted to be. Yeah. And uh, paid per click is like the, like Google AdWords. Yeah, you're, absolutely. You're paying per click. Absolutely. And when people would say that fast in the beginning, right, I didn't know anything, I was like, pay-per-click. What is pay-per-click? Yeah. yeah. Paid yeah. per click. Yeah, you're paying every time yeah. someone clicks on your ad, which yeah. is a disturbing thought, but, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. really is. Especially now, because I know a while back we were talking about bots as well, right? Bots sure. will get into your sure. ads and ramp all that up, and it's like, golly. Sure. When yeah. we get back into talking about the advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. of SEO and AdWords, remind remind yeah. me about that because that yeah. is something to factor yeah, in. We'll go right into it. It's yeah. my show. We can do it. Yeah, we okay. Want, so, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. That yeah. is the one thing when you look at AdWords that okay. can be a little tricky. And, and I say this by, you could call Google right now with a credit card and set up a Google account. They will set up your ads for free. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do anything, right? Yeah. That being said, it's going to be set up on Google's parameters where it's going mm -hmm. to run to make it at most profitable for them. Um, yeah, they're definitely not a non for pro not for profit business. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, one thing to think about besides that is so if if you when you're running an account, besides the fact if someone like Google set it up and it was running really wide, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that it wasn't as targeted as it should be, you okay. could burn a lot of money. That broad. Broad. What okay. I um what I mean is like with with AdWords, you can kind of cast cast through a wide net okay. or a small net. Okay. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. Some companies are out there fishing, trying to get people, you know, out of the ocean into a net, right? Mm -hmm. And some people are just strictly talking to the people that are already in the net per se. Gotcha. Um I don't know if that's the best explanation. No, no it makes sense to me. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, um yeah. The other thing besides that to keep in mind is that a certain amount of these clicks that you're going to get mm -hmm. are going to be from bots, maybe competitors, mm -hmm. spammers. So you do have to consider that, you know, when you are getting to AdWords, that a certain amount of your clicks are going to be worthless, right? Yeah, sure. um, that being said, there are there is software out there and services that we utilize to mm -hmm. help. One is called Click Cease. Okay. If you're running an AdWords campaign yourself, check it out. Yeah. And it does help stop some of the spam bot traffic. Mm -hmm. And in some niches, um, you know, karate is different than say a, um, a plumber, yeah. but like in water at restoration, for example, a click could be $75 just for a click. Mm. So, I mean, even if they were getting 10 fraudulent clicks a month, I mean, that's $750 in ad spend, yeah. um, you know, that they would be outlaying basically for nothing. And without, without knowing that and without knowing the best software to use, you'd have no idea. Right. hundred I mean, percent. You would not know. That's kind of the reason that an agency becomes important when yeah. it comes to AdWords yeah. is because once again, it's kind of like having an attorney that's fighting for you. You know, the, the, you have right. the law, right? But then right. they kind of work it more in your favor. Yeah. Google setting it up in a way that it's most advantageous to them. And what we yeah. understand is how Google works, mm -hmm. how the search algorithm works for paid ads and yeah. what we need to do to satisfy it. And once again, it's not about tricking Google. Right. It's about giving them what they want. That's no, true. Um, and the awesome thing about AdWords compared to SEO mm. is they give you the guidebook, mm. right? They tell you what to do, um, yeah. unlike SEO where everything's a secret. Mm. So AdWords is way more transparent. Okay. It can really grow your business, but yeah. you know, there's also some things that you have to be careful of right. um, to avoid a waste, right? Yeah. 
But I would think between the two of them, if I was a do it yourself, or if you're at home right now and you have a business, yeah. if there was SEO, I was going to try to do myself or paid ads. I was going to do myself. Mm -hmm. I would think that you would have better success with the AdWords. Yeah. Um, I think that anybody could set up an AdWords account with very little knowledge and start generating leads. Yeah. Now those leads are going to come at a higher cost and a higher spin than if you hired right. a company like ours, yeah. but you could do it. Yeah. That being said, it'd be very hard for me to believe that a plumber in DFW that built his own website and did his own SEO is mm -hmm. going to end up in the top five for a plumber. Right. Um, I just think there's there's way more that goes into it. Yeah. The algorithms change every three months. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a long, arduous process. Yeah. You know, with AdWords, it's a little or simpler to um, to manage. And if I'm not mistaken, you did your own for a while, right? Yeah, and that's what I was going to get into. Yeah. So with our martial arts schools, I we built the website. Taylor actually helped me, um, and then. I set up all the AdWords and, and we manage what was crazy to me is, you know, I would manage those and I would try to go in there every week. Right. And, and look at the keywords that are being hit and like, all right, is that a negative word? Yeah. I'm going to move it to, you know, right. ne negative words. Right. Cause everybody thinks, Oh, it's all about keywords. And that's not necessarily true that I found right. out. Right. The negative keywords are it, important, if not more important, I right. think than some of the keywords. So, um, but, what was difficult for me to keep up with is that change that you're talking about. Right. Right. And so, and, and, and even Facebook ads type things was the same way we set up our accounts and everything. And, um, but that change was very difficult to keep up with sure. and run the business sure. and, you know, do all these other things. So, um, yeah, we had hired a, an agency as well too, mm -hmm. and not, not your agency, but I didn't know you then. Right. Um, uh, to my detriment, but you know, I know you now, so that's cool. And right. we'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, so one thing I found out is not all agencies are created equal. Sure. Right. By any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you go off of faith that, hey, they're doing the, you know, their due diligence and everything. And um, after got to uh, meet you and talk to you, I had you take over the account. And, um, you know, it, it's like, if you ever rode your bike in uh, elementary and you set up this ramp, right? And you think, okay, that ramp's cool, but if it was steeper, I would go higher. And uh, then you'd hit that ramp and you'd fall off and almost break your arm and everything. Well, the ad funds aren't that way, but what is that way is is the leads that we're getting. Yeah. They've skyrocketed. It's and been it's awesome. been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really been really amazing to watch it's been fun for me too yeah. i mean i think there was a time in january or early february where i was texting you almost once a week yeah. you know with like wow this is crazy right yeah. um unfortunately for me i don't know if it's i'm so amazing at what i do or the previous company you hired just wasn't doing their job <laughs> right you know so i think i benefited from you know one my skill set yeah. <laughs> and two the other company made me look really good no and i get that too yeah. and i know there's some of that right, right. but but it, it definitely i don't think would have skyrocketed up if you didn't know what you were doing. Sure. Right. Cause if you were just the same as them, then it would have stayed flat. Sure. And, we, and we did okay. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. I mean, we were doing okay, but uh, I noticed this year has been a definitely an uptick for most of our locations. Yeah. So if I'm not it's been pretty cool. Yeah. Last time I checked, I think since we started in November, like you've eight X your conversions. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's gone up 800%. Yeah. <laughs> it's been pretty decent. And, you know, just to th talk about the agency thing, right? I want, yeah. I want people to keep in mind when you hire an agency, I mean, you are going to get what you pay for, right? right? There are agencies out there that would offer you Google AdWord management for $300 a month. Mm. Some car charge 2000 And mm -hmm. I want to go back to my role as a pay-per-click manager, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to keep this in mind. I think clients were only paying four or $500 a month for a management fee, which is pretty inexpensive in the industry. But here's what I want you to understand. Not only was I managing your account, I was managing 39 other business owners account at the same time, mm -hmm. right? The only way an agency can pay people fairly and you know, offer those low prices to have an ex a large volume, yeah. right? Which means you lose that personal attention. Right. And the way that our the company was set up, and there's no need to mention the name, is we were basically required every month to touch an account for two hours, right? right? So when you think about that, you're paying $250 an hour for someone to manage your ads. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, not to mention that it'd be very impossible to do a very good job in two hours. Right, you know? right. Yeah, which again, you, you know, you look at value, you say, okay, well, 250 bucks an hour is ridiculous. However, if they were producing, right, then it's like, yeah, sure, right? Uh, sure. So it really comes down to the value, right? 
But like you said, uh, you know, spending just a couple hours a month yeah. touching it, you really can't invest what you need to in it for sure. And yeah. so it's just really quick, making some small tweaks and going on. And, right. And yeah, I get it. And in your case, you know, if uh, you don't mind me saying, you know, you have a decent budget. It's not like you're just spending two hundred dollars a month, right? Sure. So when you talk about you know, say a $5,000 spin, if it gets 10, you know, save 10%, that's $500. Yeah. You know, that makes a pretty big difference having somebody paying attention to detail. And one other yeah. tip I can give you business owners is mm -hmm. if you do have somebody running your AdWords account, there is something inside the account that you can tick on. This is change history, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can go in there and basically see every move that's been made in that account. Um, that's how you're going to know whether the company that you're working with is actually doing anything. Mm. I mean, it tells you right there. Um, yeah. That being said, once you have an account set where, I mean, it's just ripping and roaring, there's yeah. going to need to be less optimizations. Sure. But, you know, that's kind of what we found in going back to your account, right. right? That it just hadn't been touched in a couple months and the optimizations yeah. hadn't have been made. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, last thing I'll say about that, I kind of mm -hmm. feel like one thing we don't talk about as agencies is a fiduciary responsibility, right? Mm. We talk about it for insurance agents or investors, finance guys, right. but essentially, you know, when you're investing in SEO or paid search, I mean, you're giving X amount of dollars to that agency delivery your results, right? right. Um, and to me, we have a fiduciary responsibility. We need to make sure that those marketing dollars are accounted for and make sure that they're yeah. working for you. Yeah. Um, and like I said, ultimately, if you go to a route of a, a lower end option, option mm -hmm. that's not going to be part of what you're getting right, right right yeah for sure we just i just call that integrity yeah, yeah. sure being a person of integrity right sure you're gonna yeah. pay me this amount i'm going to give you the service right whatever it is right so um well what are what are some uh maybe diving a little bit more what are some pros and cons of seo compared to the paid ads and really in the the long-term stability and cost effectiveness i know we mentioned that a little bit um but do you see that is there a certain time that you could back off of paid ads or do you think that that should always be part of the business right yeah i, I mean like i said i think if the budget um if budget is available yeah then they work perfectly in synergy and okay. we go back to the again for that how we describe that first page of google right yeah if i go in i'm looking for a plumber in that local service ad i see um City View Plumbing, yeah, for example, yeah. right? And then I go to the paid ads and I see City View Plumbing. Shout mm. out to Eric. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then if I go down and I see them on the map, yeah. right? Well, psychologically, I mean, this yep. is the brand that I'm seeing everywhere, right? Yeah. So sure. although they may end up clicking on your organic listing, they had to mm -hmm. pass your brand to get there, right? Right. So I think that they both can be super valuable used together. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, good point. So I definitely hear that, yeah, because the way they lay that out, being front of mind to them over and over and over, that repetitiveness. Sure. Right? Uh, we always, I always tell everybody that someone has to see your brand seven to eight times yes. before they will make a purchase with you. Right. Right. And uh, so that's just adding those layers of, of times that they're seeing you. For over, sure. Even if it's at that same moment. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think the other piece of that was what was the pro and cons of each, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's just start with AdWords, right? Yeah. The, the pros of AdWords is the fact that you literally can have your ads up in 24 hours. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you put in your credit card, you right. optimize the account or you set it up correctly and boom, your ads are serving. Yeah. Um, that's obviously a, um, a huge advantage. Sure. The fact that you're going to be at the very top of the page is a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. um, in some levels, the fact that you can turn it on and turn it off is an advantage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, the disadvantage to it is it's a, it's a competition, right? Mm -hmm. It's your, whatever somebody else is willing to pay versus what you're willing to pay. Right. Um, so the cost could change all the time. Well, well the you, bid system. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if Johnny's bidding a dollar a click and you're bidding 80 cents a click, now it's now a dollar, right? You know, when you go to a dollar 20, he may try to bid a dollar 40 or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Right. Um, but it's ever changing. So sometimes yeah. you have to keep in mind your budget could be changing as well. Yeah. Um, that's a downside of it. You know, mm -hmm. once again, it's paid. So once you turn your ad off, you're no longer getting traffic. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, like I said, there's not a hundred percent of the clicks you get are going to be your target audience. True. Um, strictly either through spam, people just looking for keywords, um, you know, that you may much may not be, uh, should show up for, but you do sometimes some yeah. flip through the system. Mm. You know, I think not, you know, you're not getting 100% of the traffic you're paying for is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, right? I, get, I get that. Yeah. Um, now, flipping over to the SEO side, if we look at some of the positives from it is, mm -hmm. 
aside what you're paying your SEO agency to do your work, that traffic is free. Mm. Uh, it's proven to convert at a higher rate. Yeah. You're building your brand. You're building trust. Yeah. Um, I would think if I was buying a business, um, let's say, let's use uh, Texas Black Belt Academy, sure. right? If I was looking to buy a franchise or I was looking to buy a business, if that company was already ranking in Google and generating leads, the value of that business has got to be more than if it's not, right? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I think about it. I, I've, I used to say to people, look, if you are building this business to give it to your kids, mm. SEO is where it's at. Because yeah. the longer you do it, the better you're going to get, the yeah. more, more visibility you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, what Google's looking for is expertise, authority, and trust. Mm. And the trust and authority and all that takes a lot of time to build, yeah. right? And so the longer you're building that trust, the more love you're going to get from Google, which means the more traffic, more searches, yep. and ultimately the more leads. Yeah. Um, downside to SEO, obviously, it's a long term play. Um, yeah. in, unless you're in striking distance, you know, you're looking at six, nine, maybe even 12 months before mm. we're talking about an ROI. And you're talking about a fresh website before hitting an ROI, not, not a website that you're, you know, three, three rankings down or something like that. Those you can get probably up there faster. Yeah. Right. But a brand new website, it may, it may be a little bit. Well, old or new, let me give you an example. On the way here, I was thinking about this and I looked it up. Okay. There is 4,300 roofers in DFW. 4,300. 4,300. Okay. Wow. So you figure on page one of Google, yeah. like for Fort Worth roofer, Dallas roofer, whatever, there's 10 organic spots. Yeah. Right. So you need to be in the top 10 of 4,000. And if my, I don't know if my mask, it's like a quarter of 1%. Yeah. A quarter of 1% of the roofers are going to find themselves on page one. Wow. Right. So, you know, you, that's what we're really doing here. Yeah. You know, when people think about like, I want to do SEO, I want to dominate my niche, you mm -hmm. got to consider there's thousands of other people that want that same place. Yeah. You know? Yep. And, and that's what's crazy. Yeah. You know, it, it really is a lot of competition. And that's why hiring the right company is important. Yeah. Having the right strategy is important. Mm. Um, and what I say that you could have a website that's been around for 10 years that has no authority and it could take a long time too. Okay. Um, but, okay. You, you know, even just because a website isn't new or it's established doesn't mean that it has any authority mm. um, or it's really optimized correctly. Right? right. So it could be new or old. I would look for your current starting point. Okay. Where are you currently ranked? Sure. Are you on page two or page 10? Right. What's the competitive landscape? Okay. You know, how many people are currently doing SEO or have been doing SEO for a while? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of look at your competitive metrics and find out how, what is the gap between y'all, right? Right. And that's going to have a big impact too. Mm. Um, obviously, water restoration and roofers are going to be super competitive. Yeah. Um, you know, if you looked into something like a, a photo booth rental right. um, or yeah. something like that, it's going to be a yeah. lot less competitive, but generally the more profitable, the more competitive and more it costs to play in the space. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes total sense. Um, how can I generate SEO and paid strategy to maximize results and enhance overall marketing performance? What, well, how could you use both of them? Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess to integrate them together. Right. I mean, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, well, I have mentioned before the synergy between the two of them, but let me explain yeah. how I would use, if I had a client that was doing AdWords and as well as doing SEO, mm -hmm. um, one thing that's about Google that used to be true was they would give you a lot of the keyword data, how many people were searching exact search volumes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into the AdWords tool to look, you'll notice that they, um, they don't give you as much information. Okay. However, if you're buying ads, you can find out exactly what search terms people were clicking mm. um, before they got to your website. You yeah. can find out what terms are converting. Okay. And so a lot of times I can discover keywords from an AdWords campaign to yeah. turn around and then optimize the website uh. for, right? So yeah, so, where's our where's our boom? <laughs> yeah. boom? Yeah, so we can use the AdWords as a little bit of a re yeah. research and discovery mm. tool, and also too, you know, as a business owner, if you're investing in ads, you know, you really only want to invest in the keywords that are the most profitable. Yeah, you know, if yeah. if you uh, if you have a business a, a service that makes a hundred dollars or a service that makes ten dollars, yeah, you know, I'm probably going to be running ads on the services that make me the most money or the most profitable. Uh, you're like a SEO ninja. You're like a black belt in this. I would like to think so, but I'll be honest with you. There's probably a 12 year old kid overseas that, <laughs> you know, is 10 times smarter than I've ever dreamed of, you know? Oh, well, 
Yeah. You know? And and I think one thing too about this is, you know, technology is always growing. Yeah. Right. And I think that's yeah. one thing for us over 40, mm. you know, we have to go move with the times. Yeah. And even myself, mm. SEO is changing all the time. Every three or four months, there's something different. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always evolving and, you know, we have to, especially as older people, we have to evolve with it. Yeah. 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 I guess there's uh, certain places, certain things that you stay connected to that gives you that education, that evolving uh, data from them. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, very cool. Um, well, uh, what metrics should I track to measure the effectiveness of SEO uh, and pay? Oh, I guess paid ads, they, they probably give you some matrix within the Google AdWords uh platform sure right that you could track how do you track if you're effective necessarily on seo other than i'm ranked up or i'm not sure right yeah and that really comes down to a business owner perspective okay the the vanity for the vanity of being number one yeah is everything right we all want to beat our competition but at the end of the day if it's not delivering you customers yeah it's nice for your ego but it doesn't matter (laughs) right right. you know what i mean yeah not true the matrix that i'm looking for is again conversions sure right um and I guess there's a way to track on the back end um, if it's coming from an ad or organic. Sure. Right. Um, sure. I don't know what those are. All I, like I said, I know just a little bit to get me in trouble. I know <laughs> of uh, what they call a UTM code. Right. I have no idea what that means. I just know what it does. Okay. Right. What does it? UTM. Universal Tag Manager. Universal Tag Manager. There you go. Yeah. Okay. The- yeah. The, so for metrics, I think every business owner is going to be different, right? Okay. For some businesses are looking for phone calls. Some businesses are looking for lead forms. Yeah. Um, if you're a brick and mortar business, you might be people looking, um, clicking for directions to your business. Okay. Um, a conversion is going to be different for everybody. But the yeah. greatest thing about digital marketing compared to going back to like the yellow pages mm-hmm. is not everything is pretty trackable. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. you can pretty much figure out almost down to the keyword what converted. Yeah. Um, and to your point, Google Analytics, you mm-hmm. know, tracks all of those things for you. Yeah. You can set up your goals, um, your conversion yeah. goals inside of there and understand yeah. the amount of people that visit a page, that fill out a form, that mm-hmm. make a phone call, um, whatever conversion is the most important to your business. But right. ultimately, you're going to measure it by your profitability. Yeah. Um, yeah, true. Although some of that's kind of hard, right? I mean, right. you don't know if, um, like, say, if you were trying to cross track AdWords versus SEO, some Somebody could have come to a Google ad, right? Right. And then three days later, just typed in your website directly. And then it's going to count as organic traffic, but it was initially initiated by. Yeah. So that's a good question I've always had. And uh, this is what my understanding is. So you have many different, you know, styles of marketing that you're doing, right? You may be doing paid ads, SEO, um, flyers, uh, direct mailers, whatever, right? Uh, Email marketing. Whichever, uh, whichever the whatever last one that came uh, from that person. So if that person came in through an email campaign, mm-hmm. right, you contribute that email campaign to to uh, that lead. Saying, right. Hey, that lead came from this particular one. Sure. Right? It's the very last one sure. where they converted. Right. Right. The they last made, click attribute. The, okay. Yeah. yeah. See, I figured there yeah. was something right. Uh, last click attribute. I believe it's called. So, okay. yeah. It changes all the time. Google's yeah. always changing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Last but, time I looked in your account, that's what I called it. <laughs> okay. But that's what, the, that's what it's called though. Last yeah. click attribute, yeah. right? The last thing that they clicked on or whatever before they, and, and I guess that's again, since it's digital, all that's trackable. Right. Right. And, uh, then you would know, okay, I'm spending this, I'm getting this amount of leads this amount of leads is coming organically through my website. Right. Right. And then, uh, you know, social media or whatever, right. Sure. Just have that source report. Sure. Yeah. And that, that'll help you track your budget and things like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, that's the greatest thing about digital marketing is the ability to track it, understand, um, you know, if I'm working with a client, I'm going to find out, What's more profitable for you, AdWords mm. or SEO? Right. If SEO is has, we have some landscape that we can target that we're currently not visible in. Yeah. You know, it may be best to move that from AdWords and you know put it into SEO. Or yeah. you know, if SEO is just taking forever and you need to get some leads, you know, maybe you mm. back off your SEO budget and put it into AdWords. Yeah, and I guess again, that's the good thing about all this is like, hey, for two months, I want to take away my SEO budget, bump up to paid ads because I need some leads right now, mm-hmm. and then. 
ease it back in and and, and go that route. Yeah. Yeah. You can certainly do that. But yeah. my one suggestion would be, honestly, if you are really looking before you decide to invest in an SEO program, mm -hmm. I would just say, make sure that it's really something you're committed to. Okay. Um, because I have, I don't require people to sign contracts. That's not how I work. Right. Right. But the reason that a lot of SEO companies do have people sign contracts is because they'll do it for three or four months and yeah. then they'll be like, I'm not getting any leads right. and then they're out. Right. Yeah. And 99% of the time, the conversation with them has been, please understand this is a long-term process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Setting up the expectation in the beginning, yeah. which I, and I totally understand. And right. get, um, what, what kind of time frame do you think would be a good, if, if, if they use your company or not, or use another company, maybe they're in another state, you know, or whatever, and they want to use someone they know, what should be their level of just an average level? I know you can't do everybody's expectation, sure. right? But what would be a just a general rule of thumb? Hey, if you're going to invest in SEO, I mean, give it six months, give it 10 months, 12 months. What, what yeah. do you think? Well, like I said, once again, it depends where you're currently at. True. And, and, and tell you what, the joke in the SEO industry is it depends. It depends. Because literally almost any question is yeah. it depends, you know, yeah. because it depends on what's happening over here or what's happening yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah. Um, I told everybody I was going to put you in the hot seat. So I'm really yeah. trying to put the screws down on you. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? I mean, what, what would your advice, let's say I'm not using you and I'm using someone okay. else and I want to stick with them. Okay. And I say, Hey, I, I found this company I want to go to, right. I'm really committed to them. How long would you tell me, Hey, stick with them for this amount of time before you're, you, you see results. I would say if no, it yeah. depends. I would say if you have a legitimate budget yeah. and you're investing in your SEO, I mean, I think that you should see measurable results, you know, within two to three months. And by that I mean let's say that you were ranked fiftieth. Okay. You should start to see yourself become forty or thirtieth, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, from a business owner perspective, we're really only worried about getting our return on investment, right? Uh, yeah. I would legitimately think that for most businesses that are kind of starting from scratch, yeah, you know. It's pretty industry strange to say this, but I mean, six to 12 months. I would, that's yeah. what's in, been in my head. I just want to yeah. make sure that my expectation wasn't uh, too big or too small, right? right? So I, I was thinking six to 12 months. That's what I've told some other business owners. Sure. Hey, if you're going to invest into it, give it a good six to 12 months for SEO. For sure. I mean, paid ads, obviously, it may be a one week or you know one day Right. necessarily right if everything's right. set up yeah all things considered sure um so yeah i was just making yeah sure. so i would say just you know if nothing else find a budget you're comfortable with that if you didn't make any money off that investment for 12 months you'd be okay with right because mm. it's better to start off with a smaller seo program and stick to it and then yeah. add on from there right. than to do one and quit every three months because right. the way that google works it's kind of an ongoing activity yeah you know they want you to be adding content frequently you need to be gathering links from other sites at least that's what the algorithm wants right now yeah let's can I talk about that for a sure. minute? Yeah. Is that what they call backlinks? Backlinks, yes. Okay, so a backlink is a link to your website from another website. Absolutely. Like a like a would a blog type thing that would link to that? Would for that sure. be a backlink? It's like anytime you've been on a website and you see like a hyperlink that you can click on and it yeah. takes you to another website, that's yeah. essentially a backlink. Mm -hmm. If that link was to take you internally within the website, it'd be called an internal link. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And both are actually very important for SEO. Mm. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Okay. So internal links within your website. Absolutely. So if they're on, you know, whatever page and they want to plumbing, for example, and they want to know about kitchen faucets and you click that and it goes to a blog that talks about that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very usable. Yep. Right. All and right. that, that kind of feeds into the user experience on the website. Yeah. Um, also internal links pass authority from one page to the other. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. both are very important. Um, mm. Backlinks. I um, mean, content, in my opinion, are the two most important things. Back when, you, when you say, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. When you say content, you mean content on your actual website. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. You know, I think content is the absolute most important thing because okay. without the right information on your website, Google's not going to rank you. Yeah. Um, and then it comes down to building that authority, you know, through mm -hmm. the backlinks. But mm -hmm. all of this is ever changing. Yeah. You know, backlinks used to be way more important than, than they are now. Okay. They're still super important, but the quality of them is really the most important. Um, for example, if I was trying to rank a uh, martial arts studio, yeah. a link from an authoritative site about karate or jujitsu or Krav Maga, whatever it may be, yeah. is going to place a lot more value than a site from you know a plumber, you yeah. know, giving you a link. Talking right? about karate, right? Yeah. yeah. Google's smart enough at this point that yeah. they understand where the links are coming from and are mm -hmm. able to sort out the value. I mean, Google basically tells you where you're about to go when you get in the car. 
That's crazy. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you think about that, they don't understand these search queries and how all that works. Like yeah. trying to outsmart Google at this point is just absurd. Yeah. You know, yeah, in my I opinion, think. anyways. No, I, I, I see that a hundred percent. Right. <laughs> yeah. For sure. They have a hundred MIT graduates that work there. I, I don't yeah. think in any way, shape or form that I'm ever going to be able to out game the system. No, you know? no, 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 for sure. Um, man, a lot of great information. Um, super you know informative and uh appreciate you letting us uh dive in deep to to all this stuff awesome i appreciate it, it was a lot of fun yeah so uh real quick um if someone either had an seo company or wanted to explore about you know seo or paid ads and stuff sure um you can take on a few more clients absolutely okay you yeah. know it's um yeah, we definitely take more clients if you're yeah, the right sure. fit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one thing for sure yeah. that we do is if you're not a great fit for what we do, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, when you work with a client, I mean, it's a partnership, especially yeah. in a small business owner situation. And so, right. you know, you don't want to work with a partner in me that you're not going to enjoy working with and, right. and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've definitely enjoyed working with you. And uh, now I, I really appreciate your open and honesty and, um, yeah, and whenever you started getting excited about our account, I was like, "Man, this is this is awesome, right?" Yeah. Someone actually cares, and they're getting excited about it. And yeah, well, that and gets me excited. That the reason I love working with small business owners is because it really makes a difference. Yeah. You know what I do for you? I mean, could pay for your vacation, or yeah. you know what I mean? It's like oh, no, if, I, when yeah. you're doing bigger SEO campaigns or AdWords for like a big company like Terminex or Molly Maids, you know you're, you know, you could be making a CEO a lot of money, but it just right. hits different. Yeah, you know. Um, it, I worked with a client recently. It was a father and his two sons. Okay. You know, what, what happens for them is going to build their family over time. Right. You know, that's, that pulls your heartstrings a lot more than a CEO making an extra million dollars. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's one reason why I've had this show. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, if we can invest into other people and share with them and, yeah. and get them more educated and business, uh, and then, yeah, it can definitely propel them forward. Right. Sure. Definitely not going to have someone, you know, that owns McDonald's listen to my podcast. Sure. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. I could care less. Right. But it's, yeah. the, it's the people that have boots on the ground. Sure. Uh, the one-offs or those that want to build a legacy for their family sure. and things like that, that uh, really. Yeah. Help. And one the takeaway to add on that one thing that is the most uncomfortable question for me to ask a client mm -hmm. is what is your budget? Mm -hmm. Right. Because it comes off like. I get defensive if somebody asks me that. Yeah. But as an expert tip, I want you to not be scared of that conversation. And this mm -hmm. is why there we have, I've worked with SEO clients that paid anywhere from $600 when I first started yeah. to when I was an SEO director at Hennessy digital clients paid up to $50,000 a month. Right. Wow. Um, I mean, it's just incredible. The difference in type of SEO programs yeah. um, that are out there. Yeah. And, and, yeah. What is your budget? I, I totally get it as well too. Right. So, um, for our charcuterie business, whenever someone is wanting, you know, to, to plan for a wedding or a big event, right. I mean, we can easily scale this where it's like just enough food or we can just make it as grand as and big and, you know, showy and things like that. Right, so right. knowing that budget really helps us to say, okay, I know where to build my, Right. You know, uh, product for you for sure. and go from there. I mean, you, yeah. you sort of got to know it. Right? Yeah. Going back to the SEO and AdWords conversation. Yeah. I mean, I have to know your budget in order to formulate a, the right strategy. Right. You know, a lot of people right. will say, well, just bring me a proposal and let me know. Well, in quite fairness, I don't want to spend four hours investigating the market and doing a bunch of research for something that you're never going to right. invest in. Right. You know, it's kind of a waste of my time and it's a waste of yours. It's like me selling you a Rolls Royce when I'm going to tell you that at the end of the day, we're about to buy a Hyundai. Right. <laughs> great shout out to Hyundai. I'm sure they're great. <laughs> hey, my daughter has one. Yeah. Yeah. It almost broke down the other day, but. It, it, okay. it just needed some antifreeze so nice anyway we educated her a little bit on yeah. how to check her antifreeze and i yeah. think she's good so uh no so and my recommendation would be on any small business the sooner you can start the better yeah. right the sooner sure. you can start even if it's with 100 bucks a month something just to start uh, the better and then start building that up and finding that threshold that you're comfortable with and then obviously if it's having roi and results for me i'm like pour some fire pull some gas on it yeah. Light it up and see how big you can get it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, hey, if uh, if you're still hanging with us, a couple of things that we know. One, you like us or the stuff that we're giving you, you found educational. So we appreciate you hanging on to the end. Um, we do want to uh, let you know that if, if you're interested or if you have questions for WIT, uh, you can go to seocherry.com. Is that the best way for it them is. to reach you? Yeah. 
Okay, go to seocherry.com and uh, yeah, look him up. I'm sure he has a form on there and, and, and all that. They could reach out and ask questions and stuff. Absolutely. So, cool. We'll see you next time on The Biz Life. Thanks. <laughs>